I am going to talk you through the stomach meridian within kinesiology and how we work with the stomach meridian. So let's start off by talking about what the stomach actually does. So the stomach is here. It's on the left hand side of our torso underneath the rib cage. So a lot of people, when they say they've got stomach ache, often can point to their bellies. That's not where the stomach is. The stomach is higher. So it is at the end of the esophagus. So when we are chewing our food and we swallow, it goes through the esophagus. And then the first place it, it goes to is the stomach. And the stomach has three important functions. It's like a mixer. So it is there to ch churn, <coughs> squeeze, and mix the food with digestive acid and enzymes. And it creates a liquidy mixture called chyme, which is then designed to go into the small intestine for us to absorb our nutrients. The stomach also stores food. So this is an important role because if we didn't have this in the stomach, then we would just be hungry all the time. And it's the job of the stomach to release the food into the intestines when the intestines are ready to process it. It also has an immune function, the stomach, and this is, this is really important because I think this is often misunderstood, that the acid, stomach acid, and the mucus that is created in the stomach helps kill any bacteria that might be in the food because this is you know, the outside world coming into our inside world. And so the immune system has got that response of, do I need to kill any, any bugs here? So the kinesiology muscles that we work with for the stomach, the stomach, when we look at our menu of muscles within kinesiology, I think the stomach is the meridian with the most. This is why the stomach meridian is incredibly important and often seen as a priority for many kinesiologists. So we've got the neck, both um, anterior and posterior neck muscles are connected to the stomach. So this is when I have um, someone coming into my clinic and they are talking about neck pain, I'm thinking stomach. Pectoralis major clavicula in the chest, subclavius in the chest, levator scapula in the back, that's about there. Pec minor is here again in the shoulder. Um, supinator and pronator, so these are muscles that run through the wrist, and brachioradialis, that's another big mu muscle that, um, that runs through the, uh, the, the forearm. So if someone's got a stomach imbalance, then like, think about all these muscles through the chest and through the upper back and also through the arms. So we tend to see imbalances that are like this, this hunched position, which is also a really bad position to eat in, if you think about it, and, and compromises the stomach even more. But someone who's got like a rounded back or rounded shoulders and a collapsed chest, that's often where I'm thinking, okay, what is going on with the stomach here? And because of these muscles that run through the hand and the forearm and the wrist, complaints like RSI or carpal tunnel can often be an indicator that there's something going on with the stomach. How to balance how we work with the stomach is we work with the bees. So this is our toolkit of four. So this is biochemical, emotional, electrical, and structural, which is one of the reasons that I love being a kinesiologist because I have this toolkit and I'm able to, when someone comes in, I'm able to explore in lots of different avenues. Okay, where is this coming from? What needs to be worked on here? Um, Biochemically, because the stomach is the beginning of digestion, I'm going to be looking at diet and food intolerances. And uh, like wheat, dairy and sugar are one of our first food intolerances that we like to explore because they have such an anti-nutrient effect in the body. Lifestyle factors, giving up smoking. Smoking um, depletes zinc in the body and zinc is needed for our digestive enzymes. It also changes the way we taste food. So then we are not um, desiring healthy foods. It can often um, really throw us into wanting to eat more junk food is, is when um, smoking changes our palate. Chewing gum, it's a huge one. So if you think about the act of chewing gum, we are 
stimulating digestive function. The body thinks the food is coming and then no food comes. And then we've got all this digestive acid and all these enzymes going, where's the food? This really starts to imbalance the stomach. So anybody who regularly chews gum, and, and, and often they do it because they're worried about bad breath. Bad breath often comes from a stomach imbalance. So we need to look at this balance between stomach acid and stomach enzymes if we want to have a nice fresh breath as well as brushing our teeth of course avoiding processed sugars um absolutely i mean uh, the, when we look at the stomach as a meridian from a chinese medicine perspective the flavor is sweetness and so someone with a stomach imbalance will be often craving sugar the di the, the supplements that we particularly work with for the stomach we work with digestive enzymes, digestive acid. We work with herbs such as marshmallow, ginger, or garlic, depending if there is a, um, a, a maybe a bacterial imbalance that's going on with the stomach. And we look at vitamins and minerals, particularly focusing on zinc and B vitamins, which can help um, uh, when they are deficient, they can lead to low stomach acid. Emotionally, the the stomach sits in the earth element as part of Chinese medicine, and <clears throat> it is associated with the emotion of mental worry and sympathy. So this is where like the whirling mind and going around in circles or worrying about what other people think, that can be quite classic stomach. And people who struggle to receive because stomach is, is, is being able to receive food. So from an emotional perspective, there, there can be a mirror there. Um, and they can sometimes have difficulty either judging themselves and being critical of themselves or others, or struggling when others are what they perceive as critical of them. The time of the day for stomach is seven to nine in the morning. So that's when the stomach is at its strongest and where we should be having a healthy breakfast. On the flip side, seven to nine in the evening is where stomach is at its weakest. This is when we're looking at the Chinese model of how the different meridians sit within the 24 hour clock. And so eating a big, full, nutritious breakfast in the morning and having a small dinner in the evening is ideal for keeping the stomach balanced. The color for the stomach is yellow. So if, if I have someone who comes in who is wearing a lot of yellow, that can be an indicator there might be something going on with the earth element or if they really dislike yellow. It's what we're looking at when we work with the Chinese medicine principle is this idea of balance. Singing is the noise that comes from the stomach. That's the, the, the noise that resonates with the stomach. So someone with a stomach imbalance could potentially really benefit from joining a choir, for example. It's an interesting piece of homework that I sometimes give clients. And the time of year is late summer. So again, we're looking at that balance, that's the key word when we're using Chinese medicine as a theory, is if we have someone who really loves the late summer or really hates the late summer, then that can indicate that there could be something going on. So we work with the stomach. The stomach is part of the, the 40 meridians that we work with um, from a Chinese medicine perspective. And we use the, the meridians and apply it to our model of the triangle of hormonal health, which is looking at the interplay between blood sugars, stress hormones and sex hormones as being a fundamental principle that we need to be looking at with our clients in this day and age. So the stomach is often seen as a victim of this, of this imbalance of this triangle. And that is because uh, the stomach is a partner organ in the earth element with the spleen and the spleen is to do with blood sugars. And when our blood sugars are imbalanced, when we're eating too many carbohydrates, we're eating too much sugar, then the stomach can be a victim of that. So um, it can have an impact on something called the, the vagus nerve, which we teach in our practitioner training. And the vagus nerve um, plays an important role within digestion, helping the stomach break food, food down and moving it along the um, gastro tract. The stress hormone cortisol stimulates gastric acid and the sex hormone estrogen inhibits it. So when we have 
high stress hormone or high um, estrogen, for example, then we can have this seesaw effect going on with gastric acid secretion. And when we're looking at the two sides of the nervous system, and this is something we teach in our practitioner training, if we're in a stress response all the time, then we're not able to come into a parasympathetic digestive function. So this is where looking at stress can be such a priority for people with stomach issues. So that is a, um, an exploration of the stomach meridian in kinesiology.